58. <laughs> a short freight. Came right out of the yard here yesterday. That one they're making up has 108. Hundred and eight. Wasn't so long ago, a dozen cars were considered quite a load. In fact, it really wasn't too long ago. The whole idea of railroads was considered a wild-eyed dream. Then that old iron horse began pushing out towards the west carrying prosperity on its back. And there was no stopping. As our country grew, the West demanded more goods. The East, more raw materials. More speed, they cried. More power. More power. More power meant bigger locomotives. Heavier rails to carry them. Heavier rails, larger loads. Faster service, bigger locomotives. Stronger bridges. More power and speed to meet the ever greater demands of a growing nation. Always more. Never enough. A strange thing was happening. The steam locomotive, which had built a new continent, was driving itself out of date. Uh... But a new kind of power was already at work in industry. And men of skill and vision worked long and hard to put this power to work on the rails. As early as 1892, their efforts brought into operation a locomotive driven by electricity. Nineteen five. Grand Central Terminal went underground. 1910, Pennsylvania Station. The electric train was on the move. From New York to New Haven, Baltimore to Bridgeport, New York to Trenton, Wilmington, Philadelphia, Washington. Power, smoother power, and plenty of speed, with greater safety and comfort. In densely populated areas, the electric train was the most economical form of transportation, where millions of people could share its benefits. The electric locomotive also demonstrated its ability to solve many difficult engineering problems. Where the grades were too steep, or the tunnels too long for steam locomotives. But for most railroads operating over long, lonely stretches, Complete electrification was simply too great an undertaking. As before, this problem sparked the imagination of industrial engineers. Required an electric locomotive that could run anywhere, on any track, without miles and miles of overhead wires or third rails. Again, they came up with an answer. An electric locomotive that carries its own power plant wherever it goes. From 
From New England to the Northwest. From Kansas to California. The Great Lakes to the Gulf. From one end of this great land to the other. The modern diesel electric locomotive. In this powerhouse on wheels, a diesel engine drives a high-speed generator which supplies current to individual electric motors mounted on the wheels. This gives flexible control and greater safety on the downgrade. With more power on the upgrade. But railroad men and scientists developed other electrical devices which kept pace with this new form of motive power. Modern communication. Automatic signal system. Snow melters. Conveyor belt. Floodlights, electric loaders, safe with centralized traffic control. Okay, live on arrival number four, on time. Nor was passenger comfort forgotten. Electricity has contributed much to improve passenger service. But the basic assignment never varies. To find new sources of power and efficiency. Today, railroad men are trying out another brand new idea. The gas turbine electric locomotive. But whatever its source, diesel, gas, coal, jet, or atomic, electric power's greatest contribution to railroading is the new meaning it has given the words fast freight. Regardless of where we live or what we do for a living, most of the things on which most of us depend are brought to us by rail. Faster schedules mean more of the good things of life for more and more people. Maple syrup in California, oranges in Grand Rapids, furniture in Dallas, cotton in Detroit, automobiles in Seattle, apples in New York City. Keeping pace with the ever-increasing demands of a progressive nation, faster, longer freight trains roll behind the new iron horse.